Welcome to another episode of Making It Keto, and today we're making a keto chicken pot pie. Listen guys, if you've been missing the chicken pot pie on a keto diet, look no further. I have the ultimate recipe. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's get started with cooking everything that's going to be going inside of the chicken pot pie. So guys, I'll be linking everything in the description box below. So refer to that for all the exact amounts and ingredients and everything that I'm using in this recipe. So we're starting off with um, our veggies. I'm gonna cut up some, uh, so we got some mushroom. We also have some celery, some onions, and we also have some chopped chicken. So guys, you can use whatever chicken you want. Hell, if you wanna use steak, It'll be completely up to you. And I'm also gonna throw in a bag of vegetables, which are consisted of carrots, broccoli, and cauliflower. Now, and as I said earlier, you can put whatever vegetables you want into it. This is just what I choose to use. All right, guys, now once we have everything cut and chopped up, we're gonna get out a large pan, and we're gonna go ahead and put some uh, avocado oil in the bottom, and we're gonna start cooking our vegetables first. So guys, there's no really no order to it. I just like to dump all my um, vegetables in first, get it all cooked down, and then put the chicken in last because I'm using a rotisserie chicken, so it's pretty much already cooked. So I don't want to cook it too much. But um, yeah, I normally put my chicken in last, but if you're um, cooking your chicken raw, I would suggest pre-cook it first because you want to make sure that chicken cook before you actually um, you know, put it, in, um, put it all together, even though we're still going to cook it in the oven. Me, I just like to make sure my chicken cook. But anyhow, that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and add in our bag vegetables. I actually cooked that in the microwave, guys. So I just added it in. And we're going to go ahead and add in our cut up chicken or whatever protein that you desire to use. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and season it. I'm using the usual seasoning. Um, just one I got from Walmart, but you can season it however you want to. And now we're gonna take some beef gelatin and we're gonna bloom it in some uh, chicken uh, chicken broth. So guys, this is what's gonna give the like gravy texture to it. Um, if you want it thicker, add more gelatin. If you don't want it as thick, add less gelatin. But um, this is kind of a feel thing. And um, you can add or take as much chicken broth or beef gelatin as you want to. I'll be um, having in the description box how much I use, guys. All right, let's go ahead and make the crust for the pot pie. So what we're gonna be using, guys, is we have uh, some lupin flour. We also have oat fiber, vital wheat gluten, and we're gonna use about a half a teaspoon of salt. Um, once we got all these ingredients together, our dry ingredients, let's go ahead and mix this up because we'll be cutting cold cubed butter into this. So we wanna make sure everything is mixed well before we add in the butter. Okay, we'll now be adding all our dry ingredients into a food processor so we can put the dough together. So what we're gonna need for this, is we're gonna need about four to six tablespoons of cold water. Um, I just put some water in a measuring glass and um, kept icing it to keep it cold. So what we're gonna do guys, is we're going to put the, we're gonna put the dry ingredients in the processor and then we're going to grind it in with the butter. Now, what I did is I used a uh, box grater and I grated the butter in, the cold butter into it. The butter has to be cold. This is very important. So I grated my butter in, but you can cube it. It's completely up to you. I just grated it because it makes a lot easier that way. And it's, it's easier to be distributed throughout the flour. Um, and as we do this, we're going to add in about you know, half of the water, probably I say about four tablespoons. If the mixture is not, you know, doughy and sticky, go ahead and add in the rest of the water, your extra uh, two tablespoons of water, and that should get it where it needs to be. But um, after it's done, it should look, you should be able to roll into the ball and it should be sticky and it should be nice and cool. All right, guys, your dough should come out something like this. As I took it out, it was a little crummy, but as you start pulling it together, it turns into a dough and that's what you want, guys. Your dough should be looking something like this. What we're going to do is we're going to saran wrap it and put it back into the refrigerator for about two hours. Because when we're working with this, we want this to be really cold. You don't want your butter to stop melting. 
All right, now once our dough has been in the refrigerator for two hours, we're gonna bring it back out and we're gonna roll everything flat. So what I did guys is I used a parchment paper and I used two of them. So when I roll the dough, everything gonna stick. But we wanna get this thing thin. Um, so we're gonna be rolling two pieces, enough for the bottom half of the Popeye and enough for the top half of the Popeye. So guys, I just pretty much took the pan I was using and I rolled my dough out to the size of the pan and I stuck it over top to make sure it was big enough. And that's pretty much how I measured it, make sure I had the dough roll out enough. Um, you can roll this too thin, which I kind of did, um, you know, but if you do that, just ball the dough back up. Probably gonna have to put it back in the refrigerator because you need the dough cold. You don't want to work with it too much because your butter will start melting. You don't want that. So um, if you mess up, don't worry. You can always ball the dough back up, put it back in the ball, put it back in the refrigerator for about an hour to 30 minutes and retry. But anyhow, once we have our crust rolled out flat, we're going to transfer it into the pan that we'll be baking it. And as you can see, guys, it fought me. Um, my crust even ripped and teared in certain spots, but it doesn't matter because we can always fix that. Pretty much it's a dough, so you know it's pliable. So what I did is I call it surgery. I just took part to the dough and glued it back together. If I had extra pieces, I just stuck it in parts where there were holes in the pie crust. Um, so yeah, it's, it's something easy that you can fix, especially the, uh, on the edges where you got an extra, you know, you got an extra dough on the outside. You can always take that and put it in spots where it's thin or maybe have a hole or a roof. So guys, you know, it's not the end of the world if you rip your crust trying to get it into the pan. All right, now once we have that set in, actually what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, well, I guess already had our oven preheated to 350 degrees. And we're going to let the bottom half of the crust cook for maybe about four to five minutes. And we're only doing this so it can kind of have um, some, some firmness at the bottom for when we pull in the wet ingredients. They don't just fall apart on us. So um, yeah, your bottom half, you want to go ahead and bake that for about five minutes at the 350. And then as you can see, we're going to add in the middle filling of the pot pie. And then we're going to add the top layer on. And then we're going to bake it in the oven at 350 degrees for roughly 30 minutes, give or take. So you want to keep an eye on around 15 minute mark. Um, mine actually took right at 30 minutes, but um, I can imagine all ovens aren't made equal. So if you go past the 30 minutes, just bake until your crust is just about golden brown. You don't want to go too far because you'll burn the edges up. Um, so just bake it until about golden brown if you exceed the 30 minute mark. All right, like I said, guys, we'll be baking this for 400 degrees, around 30 minutes until golden brown. What I'm doing is putting a couple slits in it, and I'm gonna go ahead and toss it in the oven. And after it came out of the oven, guys, this is what it looks like. Everything keto. So see you guys in the next one. Peace.